perfect. And when you guys see what I'm gonna lay on top of it, oh, yeah, it's gonna be nice. All right. You guys, I have not put in an invisible zipper in like 15 years. guys welcome back to my channel my name is Jen and this is Jen lifestyle and fashion um, on this channel we do upcycling sewing thrifting styling fashion how to style those thrifted and consigned goods and incorporate them into your wardrobe to reflect your own personal style and I dabble in a little travel because whenever I travel I love to shop thrift I love it because I always find these great little treasures. So I try to bring those to you too. So this week, um, I have an event to go to on Sunday. Today is Tuesday and I need to make a dress. Um, yeah, I need to make a dress. So I have this piece of fabric in the trunk of my car. I'm going to run down to my car and go get this piece of fabric. And then I'm going to bring it back. Um, this tutorial DIY well not really a DIY but it's more of a tutorial is going to use one of the mood free patterns so you guys I've done this before and I'll link it up here I did a mood pattern for you guys last year it was a coat so cute the coat is just in fact I might wear the coat when I wear the dress because it's supposed to warm up today it's like freezing it is snowing and it's like 35 degrees but I think this weekend it's gonna warm up a little bit it'll be perfect for that coat anyway um, there is a dress that I really like on the mood free pattern site and I want to make it for myself and I want to make it to wear um, I like it because you, you all know I like big sleeves I like big puffy sleeves if you follow me over on Instagram Follow me over on Instagram right now. Go to Instagram, Jen Lifestyle Fashion. Um, I like big sleeves. I like billowy. I like all of that. So when I can find a pattern where it's got something like that, yeah. And this fabric I have had for years. Um, I think I might have picked it up in L.A. about four or five years ago. I thought I was going to make something out of it. I didn't. And now I'm like... I make out of it so um, and now that I'm thinking about it you all I have another piece of fabric in the studio I could grab that one too I could do both of these together and literally it's going to take me all of a day and a half um, the other fabric that's in the studio is a sheer fabric that maybe I could overlay. So what I think I'll do tonight is I'll cut the dress out in the solid fabric tonight. I'll cut the pattern out, show you how I assemble it. Then I'll cut the pattern out in the solid fabric. And then tomorrow I'll go get the other and I'll cut that tomorrow and then we'll sew it together. So this might be a little more challenging because we're going to use a solid like a potassoir or otherwise known as a bridal satin. And then we're going to overlay a chiffon kind of organza type like fabric on top. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, there's a little bit of a process in that to make sure that it doesn't slip and move around. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Thanks, you guys. What's a good idea? All right, so before we get into this sewing project, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell so that you don't miss an update, all right? Because on the weekends, I'm doing sewing, DIY, upcycling, and during the week, we've got vlogs, we've got fashion events, we've got just everyday stuff that's going on in this girl's life. Yeah. All right, you guys, let's get into this sewing project and um, everything is linked below. Now, because I bought this fabric a really long time ago, I bought it at a fabric store down in L.A. I will link 
the fabric store below, but you'd have to go and check them out. I think they, I think they sell online as well. Uh, but the pattern is from Mood. I love Mood's fabrics. They are free. Um, however, you do have to print them at home. So that is a cost that you will incur. But other than that, you print the pattern out, tape it together, cut it out, lay it out, sew it up, and we're good. <laughs> All right, let's get into that. See you back here at the end. All right, you guys. So we are going to start on this dress. Um, the theme of the event that I'm going to is either green, black, or green and black, or green, black, and white, or something like that. So I have this fabric um, that I bought, like I said, many years ago. It is a lightweight bridal satin, and I really like it. Um, I love the color, first of all, and I wish it was a little thicker, which is why I think it'll do nicely underneath another piece of fabric. I don't have that other fabric here at my house, so we're just going to get started on this, and then tomorrow I'll cut the rest. Um, but let's look at the pattern. Let me show you how I prep it and all of that. All right, so we are back. Oops, we are back with the pattern. And as you can see, the pattern has 42 sheets of paper to create it, but they're only, if I'm not mistaken, oh, it didn't really print out that well on here, but I believe there's only like four, four pattern pieces that are part of the dress. So it's the front of the dress on the fold, the back of the dress, the sleeve, and the collar. So four pieces. Um, so it's a pretty easy pattern. We're going to go through the entire thing. This might have to be a two-part video. Just depends on how long because I really want you guys to see me prep and how I make changes and adjustments to really make it my own. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. We're going to start by piecing these pattern pieces together. All right. So the first thing you want to do is get the pattern pieces laid out in order. Um, I usually try to at least put down the first rows and then start taping. Typically I would use like a masking tape or scotch tape, but I just had this blue tape it was very handy. And it really, it doesn't matter what color the tape is. As long as you can see the lines, as long as the tape isn't covering the lines, you should be fine. This took me about 30 minutes to tape the entire pattern. Now there are certain parts of the pattern that you don't need to tape the sheets of paper together. They're really just there to create the space for the pattern to be laid out. Um, so some of those I left off. And here you see me putting tape on the back of the pattern just to stabilize it. I did use regular eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, so they're not very sturdy. And please do not forget to cut those All right, notches. Now the way we measure the grain line, and that's important, I've talked about this before in a previous video, uh, it's really important to make sure that the fabric is on the straight of the grain which runs lengthwise of the fabric because you don't want any stretching. You don't want anything like that. So we're going to put piece one on the fold because as it directs us, the grain line is pointing towards the edge of the paper, which means that goes on the fold. So we're going to put that there and then I'm going to pin this down. And then for this piece, before I pin it down, I want to make sure my grain line is straight. So you can use a ruler or a tape measure. It's up to you. You measure from one point to the fold and the other point to the fold to make sure that that's straight. So this should be the same here and it should be the same here. Now I can pin both of these down. You don't have to measure this one because it's on the fold. Pin both of these down and I'm going to cut them out. All right, so I'm just cutting the pieces out don't forget to cut the notches there's one in right under the bust area 
I believe there's one on the shoulder, there's one in the sleeve, and there's a notch on the side. So please take note of that because that will definitely help you match up the pieces. Okay, you guys, <laughs> I am back from the studio. Here is the beautiful fabric. This fabric, you can't even really tell from the camera how pretty it is. But look, it has, um, looks like chrysanthemums or roses, and it's sheer. It's got a black base with these green leaves. So let's see what this looks like. Let's get this laid out and cut out. Uh, tomorrow I need to go buy a zipper. I'm going to look through my stash, but I don't think I have a zipper I could probably get away with a black zipper now that I have my pieces cut out in the solid fabric it's time to cut it out in the sheer fabric um, you've got to be really careful and take your time during this process because the sheer fabric moves around a lot and um, you really want to make sure that it's accurate so take your time while cutting it out all right you guys so it's been a, a long day Anyway, I'm going to take this wig off and I'm going to spray and um, uh, not flexi rod, but um, lock loop my hair tonight. Um, I'm ready for my hair to be back. We've got some really nice weather these next couple days, as a matter of fact. And that's part of the reason why I keep it up in here, because with the cold weather, the cold, dry weather, it really makes my scalp um, really dry. So... We are going to be 60 tomorrow, 55 Saturday, 60 on Sunday, 60 on Monday. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing my hair out. Yeah. Plus, I've got to do some reels um, in the morning. I need to prepare reels for next week, um, get my clothes in order for next week so that my reels correspond with the days and all of that good stuff. Um, all right, so we are at Joanne's. With the fur babies getting the zipper for the dress. Alright, not be invisible. Oh, you guys. I think we're stuck with this one. Look what I found. Look what I found. Dark green, forest green, 22 inch. Whoa. The lighting in here is bad. Regular zipper. So. Let's see what else we need for this project. Got it. We're gonna get out of here because we got two more stops to make. Two more stops. All right, you guys, we are back from Joann's and I have two zippers. I have a hidden zipper, an invisible zipper, and a regular zipper. As I was saying in the store, I have not installed an invisible zipper in maybe 10, 15 years. I'm sure I, it's like riding a bike, but I bought the other zipper just in case I screw it up. We're gonna do this, and if I do it well, I'm going to take that portion of the video, extract it out, and I'm going to create a video on how to install an invisible zipper. That's if I can do it, all right? So let's get to it. I know I have an invisible zipper foot on my new uh, Viking Opal, uh machine so that won't be a problem we're gonna get to this zipper let's go okay so one of the things that i strongly suggest is going on the mood website and looking for instructions and um as you can see hope you can see from the picture my concern was that the zipper had to go all the way up to the collar which was going to make things a little more challenging but now that i see i'm opening that up it stops right at the top so that is great i don't have to worry about it although i don't want my back of my collar opening up like that so i might have to put a snap or a hook and eye or something back there but we're going to go ahead with this and all right so i decided i'm going to go ahead and do the overlay on the dress um, so I'm gonna start with the back I'm just gonna keep it I feel like the overlay gives it a more unique 
appearance um, and it'll set it apart and you guys know that one of the reasons that I sew my own clothes is because I don't like to see myself coming and going I like the uniqueness of my clothes so I'm pulling the pins out of the paper and I am going to um, first start with the back since that is going to be the most difficult for me I'm going to lay this out on the right side I'm gonna take the overlay and I'm going to put the overlay on top um, I gotta make sure I figure out the right side and the wrong side yes this is definitely the right side so what I found whenever I've done like an overlay with like lace or you know some other kind of sheer fabric it helps to do some basting stitches around the edges to hold the fabric in place pins are not always enough unfortunately wish they were but pins slip out it becomes very frustrating um, so what I'm gonna do I am going to pin it but I am gonna go to the sewing machine and make sure that things are lined up really well as you can see here I'm just going through and I'm pinning always pinning towards the seam Let's just make sure that's the right side I just want to make this is so hard to determine the right and the wrong side yeah that's good I think I'm good all right so I'm going through I'm gonna use this first piece as an example and I'm just putting pins like in the center close enough to the edge so that when I take it to the sewing machine I can just run a basting stitch around the dress and then I'm gonna run one down the center that stitch will come out once I'm finished with the dress but that's gonna keep this overlay fabric from stretching as much and moving around it's very challenging to sew an overlay especially on a lightweight fabric that's very silky and very smooth but you can do it you know with a little practice you can do it um, and again if you decide to do this dress in just one layer then obviously you will skip this step I'm gonna see if I can figure out on YouTube how to skip ahead <laughs> so that you can see the parts that you want to see all right so I've put a lot of pins in here so I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm basically gonna sew all the way around and I'll let you guys watch me do that after I pin the other piece okay so here at the back piece um, I flipped it over on the opposite side and I'm just going to run a long, a really long basting stitch down the center. My machine does a, um, a reinforcement stitch so I had to take that off. But I'm just sewing straight down the middle, avoiding the pins. And this is just to keep the sliding down because it will slide you can't really see let me see if I can zoom in a little bit but that's just gonna keep it from sliding now I am going to do the same thing all the way around this is an extra step but because I'm doing an invisible zipper and I just don't want to have any problems so I'm just gonna sew very close to the edge. This is a very long stitch. And I'm saying right now that I really need to change this needle out. I'm gonna do that. Hey, and what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell so that you don't miss an episode. Let's get back to this sewing project. You can see it. Um, I tried to get as close to the seam allowance as possible. I can pull these pins out now. 
um, cause now my fabric is not going to move at all. Um, it just, it just really helps. And then I can just take this middle stitch out later. All right, I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll be back. Then we're gonna start on the zipper. All right, so what I'm gonna do first to prep the fabric is just press it. Um, this is just to make sure that all the wrinkles and everything are out of it so that it's nice and flat, especially in the area that I'm sewing the zipper. Uh, when you're pressing, try not to, even with synthetic fabrics, try not to maneuver the fabric too much. Like, let it cool before you start moving it around, um, just a tad. Uh, it just helps to keep it from stretching so much. So I'm ironing that. That's one piece done. Then I'm gonna bring my other out while that one is cooling. And I'm going to press this one over here. In the meantime, you want to grab some fusible interfacing. Get yourself a tailor's ruler or uh, a small um, ruler. Or you can use a regular size ruler if you want. Along with an invisible marking pen or a pencil. Um, you know, depending on what kind of fabric you're using, you want to make sure you're using a marker or pen or chalk or something that is going to show up well and will give you a precise marking. Because as we are sewing the um, zipper in, it's it's got to be precise. All right, so I'm looking at this on the other side to make sure. So this looks like I got to make sure that this right here, since that's not all the way to the edge, I got to make sure that I'm falling inside that area. I'm going to just press this area down here where it looks a little bunchy. Make sure that that's good and flat. And then I'm going to go in and trim this excess from the edge here. Um, remember, I have to treat this as if it were one piece of fabric. So that's why it's so important that everything matches up. I'm glad I went in there and stitched this really close to the edge. So I'm just going to go in and stitch it. It's not stitch. Cut it all the way down. And in fact, in that one little area where it's not quite even, I'm going to trim because this has to be, it's really important that your fabric, if you're doing an overlay and you're doing an invisible zipper, you need to make sure that everything lines up just perfect. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to go in and trim this. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But you see where my overlay fabric kind of sticks out? So I'm just going to go in. Clean that up. Do the same thing on the shoulder. So we're good there. I'm going to do the same thing on the hem, even though... I am planning to go in with my serger and clean off that bottom. There we go. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing here on the inside. So part of the reason that this wasn't perfect was because this fabric moves around so much. And I know, you know, I picked a very challenging piece of fabric to work with, but hey, you know, I'm always good, up for a good challenge. All right. This looks really good on this side. I'm just going to grab the bottom here. Even that up.
All right, I have gone through and I have stitched all around the front piece, all the way down on both sides. Um, and I pressed it. And I will tell you, I am only pressing this on the wrong side. And the reason why is because the overlay has a little texture in it and I don't want to flatten it. So I'm only pressing on that side. And now I got a little thing going on here. I knew that was probably going to happen because this fabric is moving around underneath there. So I'm just going to hit it once with iron. A little steam. All right, so the next thing I need to do is um, grab the front pattern piece and I need to mark where the darts are going to be. I did not do that in advance. I'm going to do a little bit of an unconventional way. So we're going to start on this side. I'm going to put a pin there. I'm going to follow my line back there and then follow my line down there and then I'm going to use my invisible ink pen or my disappearing ink pen and I'm going to pull back the paper and mark mark it there and it looks like my pen is drying out so I can use this white pencil to mark my darts pull those pens out pull it back and that's where my other dart lands, right there. I'm going to do that on the other side. After marking the placement for the bust darts, I went in, pinched the bust darts together, and stitched them down. What I didn't realize is that I didn't mark them correctly, so I had to go back in, remark them, and re-sew them. You'll see that a little bit later in the video. All right, we're gonna start on the sleeve next. I'm taking the pattern piece uh, off of the sleeve. We've got the sleeve here, and I'm basically going to do this the exact same way that I did the front of the dress and the back of the dress. I'm just going to lay the sleeves out, put the fabric on top, and pin it down and run a couple stitches down the middle to keep it from sliding around. So we're going to do that and I'll let you see what it looks like afterwards. Okay, here I am. I've already cut the collar out and the collar needs to have interfacing so that it can stand up straight. And I'm overlaying the fabric on top pinning it so that I can sew it together. I'm just going to take a look at the website um, and it says, sew your ginger wood, so that's the way to begin with hemming the lining. I didn't put a lining in it. Um, I didn't want to do another layer of fabric. I just don't want to do that. Um, and then stay stitch the lace. We did that. Um, sew the darts of the bust. We did that. Um, next, attach the front to the backs of your dress at the shoulders and the side seams. Um, she used a French hem. Eh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do it on this. You know what? I might do a French hem on the sleeves only because you are going to be able to see around here. She got, she's got a picture of sewing the sleeve in. So next thing I'm going to do, I have uh, attached the sleeves to the main fabric. We're going to sew the shoulders and the sides and then we're going to press the seams open All right so here oops all right so much movement on the camera here is the back here is the front and i'm not going to take any of those basting stitches out until i am completely done because i do not want this fabric moving around so we are putting pins in the shoulders all right, we have sewn the shoulders and I pressed the seams open. Um, we're going to sew down the sides. I did sew the new dart in and press that towards the bottom. Now I'm just going to match up the side seams. 
and pin. Um, I'm going to sew at about 5 eighths of an inch, which I believe is a little less than what the pattern calls for. I'll double check. Be sure to read that part of it. But right now everything's matching up pretty good, but I want to give myself a little space. This dress, I told you I made it before. It is very fitted. Uh, my recommendation is to size up. I did not. <laughs> I should have sized up, but I did not. And so now I'm just trying to be cautious and make sure that I have enough room in the dress, especially since I did sew the zipper at, um, at almost a half an inch, which is probably a little more than it should have been. And so I want to make sure when I do my side seams that I give myself a little more room. Um, if it ends up being too snug, I am going to open up one side and do a little improvising. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be. <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty snug. So I'm going to start at the bottom. And... I am going to um, give myself a little bit more of a seam allowance. I decided to do a French seam on the sleeve because I did not want that frayed edge of the fabric to show through on my sleeve. Basically, with a French seam, you're going to take your sleeve, fold it in half, but you're going to fold it in half with wrong sides together. You're going to sew a seam at about um, an eighth or fourth of an inch all the way down. Then what you see me doing here is I took the sleeve, turned it inside out, and now you see the wrong sides of the fabric and I'm pressing the seam flat all the way from the edge of the sleeve all the way to the underarm of the sleeve. And you're going to have that seam showing on the outside. I'm going to pick it up in just a second so that you can see. Now you see the seam and then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew it. It's important with the French seam that the seams are very narrow. Now I'm going back in and I'm going to stitch using the edge of the foot as my guide. I'm going to zoom in here you guys. I realize the overlay is a little longer. I'm going to trim that off. Um, but I'm going to use the edge of the foot for my guide and that will bring me just on the other side of the raw edge that's underneath. And I'll show you in just a minute. I'm going to sew straight down. Cut that and now I will show you guys what this looks like. So this is how it looks from the inside. So your inside seam has a very nice finish. This type of French seam is usually used in lingerie so that you don't have the roughness of the seam rubbing up against your skin. You know, everything is encased. So then when I turn this over, everything's inside. Now, a um, couple things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other sleeve. And then I need to um, create the sleeve cap by running a basting stitch across the top here. And um, let me just come back on camera. Let me just make sure I'm in the shot. Um, so I tried the dress on. It's too tight. Um, it is, it fits like I can get it on, but I can't really move. So I'm going to do... A little redesign a little bit so I think what will be flattering will be to give myself uh, go days on the side that kind of flare out a little bit and are a little flowy I feel like with the sleeves being big and flowy and you know gather at the wrist that that will all go together really well. So 
I'm gonna go back out to my floor. I've got my leftover, <laughs> my leftover fabric here. I'm going to do two triangles that um, actually, no, I'm gonna do straight pieces that are gonna come um, straight down and be wider. And the reason why is because the dress is cut like that and it's straight on the side. If I put go days in there, then part of the dress is gonna kind of stick out. I'm gonna do a little tie at the waist so that it cinches the waist, but then the sides will be flowy. And I'm trying to think how I can do that and still, you know, and not have the bottom of the dress be weird. We're going to just try it. Hey, I need this dress in 12 hours. Like, the dress needs to be finished in 12 hours. And I need to do the panels on the side before I put the sleeves in because... Um, if I'm going to gather the sleeve, it's a big sleeve, so I'm not worried about not having enough fabric in there, but we're going to cut the sides and see what we come up with. All right, we're going to start with the overlay fabric, and I'm trying to use as less of this fabric as possible because I promised a couple of blouses to people. And so I need to only use so much. So I'm going to make a large square and fold it in half. I'm going to end up cutting it in half to get two pieces out of it. Now here's my green fabric that I'm folding over so that I can get two pieces out of that as well. Put the overlay on top of that and cut these triangles out. Now I'm going way bigger than what I need. Um, I'm actually making these triangles about 12 inches wide, which is way more than what I need on the sides. But because I think I want to make like a little pleat and put a tie in the back, I want to give myself enough room. It's better that the pieces be too big than too small. So now we're going to separate the pieces, put the overlay on top, pin it down, and then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other pieces and do the stitching. Now I have to take all the stitches out of the side of the dress so that I can replace it with the panel. Okay, you guys, I wanted you to get a sense of what changes I made in the dress. So this is the rectangular panel that I created and attached to the side of the dress. Um, so that is here. Uh, it's on both sides, so I have here, and then I have it here. Now, there's a couple things that I can do. Um, I can take this, bring it across the front, and do an interesting, like, pleat in the front. I could also pleat it in the back, and it would give some fullness. Um, I could bring this pleat to the back. And put a tie back there and just the front would then look like this, which is what I actually am kind of leaning towards because I have that big billowy sleeve and I don't think I want a pleat in the front. I think it would give me this bulge kind of look here and I think this would pull it back and give it a lot flatter. Um, I still, I like the length. I like that it's short. Um, I'm perfectly fine with it being short like that. And then it's still going to be a little shorter because I have to turn it up for the hem. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is pin this together here where it's comfortable, bring that flap to the back and um, probably stitch it down because I want it to lay flat and then We'll just do like a little tie in the back so that the front still has that kind of sheath dress look in the front. And the next time 
I will go up a size um, and I'll also watch my seam allowances. I think the mistake that I made was the seam allowance in the back in the zipper. I think that's where I went wrong. And I really need to uh, rod my hair right now so that it can be dry in the morning. All right, you guys, I am like really behind on this dress. So I'm going to find the middle. I'm going to fold this over, bring it straight to the back, um, stitch it down, uh, create myself a little tie, oops, a little tie in the back. And then I'm going to put these sleeves on and I've got to put this collar on. Those are, it's already 12, 15 a.m. And this dress needs to be ready in 10 hours. Yeah. Ah! All right, we're going to get it done. Um, I would have been okay if I had just gone up a size one, um, remembered from how I made it the last time, and did better on my seam allowances. So let's get this done.